Hey guys, Solomon here. Hope you are having a great day. I thought I'd just ask you a question. Okay, and that that's how how do you feel about this position for white? Do you think that this is winning or do you think that this is a draw? I think that a lot of players here, you know, against this move of, of King B6 would, would probably just think, you know what, it seems like a draw here, right? Because we have two isolated pawns, meaning that there is a file between them, right? In fact, both of these pawns, there's no other white pawns next to them at all. So they're they're kind of by themselves, right? Not, neither of these pawns can directly defend each other. So I think a lot of players would go, you know what, the pawns can't defend each other. If the king comes over, the, this pawn just promotes, right? So in this case, I just, you know, I just got to do what I can. I got to eat up these pawns and, uh, okay, we're going to get a draw. Well, guys, this is a big mistake. And that's because with two isolated pawns that are two files apart, we can use a building the wall technique. Let me go back. Really what we're going to try to do, guys, again, two files apart. Files go up and down, right? And ranks go side to side. So if we have, if, you know, if we have two pawns, again, two files apart with one file in between them, right? One file in between them, not two or three or four or five, one file in between them, we can build the wall. But the first step is putting the pawns on the same rank. So in this in this case, we're going to play a four. Notice they're now on the fourth rank, right? And we're just going to keep these pawns here. We're going to keep them here, okay? We're just going to keep them here. We're going to just continue to, to march up and eat these pawns until we see a move like king coming up attacking one of them and the second one of them is attacked the other one is going to push okay in this instance this guy's attacked push the other one right and notice what we just did we just built a wall this king can't go back to b6 and the king cannot go to b5 right uh can the black king take on c4 this is a this is a big question can the king do this no the pawn advances and the king is simply too far behind right so here's why we have a queen you don't we're winning Okay, going back, um, you know, to the move of a5, king takes c4 doesn't work because we're off to the races, and king b4 doesn't work at all because, again, we're just going to go off to the races. So even though these pawns don't directly defend each other, they can help put each other in a position where the other one cannot be captured, right? This, this pawn on a5 is not defending c4 directly, but in a sense it is because if you take, we're off to the races, and in another sense, this pawn is defending a5 because it's preventing this king b5 move. King b6 is not possible, and king b4 simply doesn't work for black, right? Let's say black goes goes back, you know, to a square like c6. In this instance, we're just going to continue with the move like king h3, right? Start making ground. If we see a move like king c5, okay, we play king h4. And notice here, guys. Um, you know, we, we can't actually force these pawns to the edge of the board. It just doesn't work like that. Um, we can build a wall. We can form a wall. And we can make it so that neither of our pawns are able to get captured, but we can't force our pawns to the edge. For example, in this situation, if we play this move A6, there's now a chink in the wall. There's there's a little tunnel that black can try to fit into, right? And they can play this move of, B, of king B6. We're now just dropping a pawn, right? And there's nothing we can do about it. We can push it as much as we want, but black's just going to take... And our pawn on c4 is going to be taken off very soon, right? So we cannot force these pawns to the edge of the board. The only time that we can move them is if this king entirely disconnects, right? Meaning that we can push one of them so that they're on the same rank without one of them being captured at that moment. Notice, a couple moves before, guys. I did not play c5 here because this guy would simply get captured. I simply waited right and then the moment the moment that this king moves back i then push the pawn to c5 so that they're on the same rank and then if you play a move like king a6 we play c6 now a lot of you are probably wondering okay wait so like in this kind of situation you know let's say black goes to a7 we we can't force these pawns to the edge of the board right so even though they can't be captured we can't really force them to the end so why does this matter it matters because we have time right this king is bound this king is bound it, it this king just is kind of stuck. It kind of has to just kind of hang around. Can't take either of our pawns, but has to make sure they can't promote. I mean, obviously, if this king just ran over here, right, we would easily promote. So the king has to kind of stick around. What is the one piece that is not chained down here? Well, it's, you know, first off, pawns aren't really considered pieces. Um, you know, pawns are pawns. And then we have the minor major pieces. But these pawns, first off, they're also kind of bound at the moment. They kind of are, because if, if this pawn moves to c7, there's a chink in the wall. If a6 is played, the black king just takes the pawn, and this king is going to be able to chase down the c6 pawn as well. So these pawns are kind of stuck. This king's kind of stuck at the moment. 
this king can do whatever it wants. So in the meantime, as black's just kind of going back and forth, we're just going to continue to take a pawn, take a pawn, right? And then from this point, uh, drive our king over. And then at the right moment, with the king's help, support this pawn. Notice, guys, we didn't play this with the king over here because the black king would just come over. But now if the king comes over, we have support. Uh, thank you for the queen. We're about to have ourselves a game over. Hope you guys, uh, you know, like this technique. Uh, if you haven't seen it before, I recommend watching this video a few, few times. Maybe check back in on it every day or two. And just make sure that you get the principles down, right? End games are, are honestly pretty simple if you put in the work, okay? Once you get the ideas and concepts down, you're going to be very comfortable in the end game. And it's going to help you not just in your end game play, but the rest of your chest, right? You're going to be less scared of trading down. And you're going to be more willing and honestly just chomping at the bits to trade down into end games that you know are winning. Again, thanks for watching today's video. And I'll see you in the next one. Hey, I wanted to give a big shout out to my December 2022 patron community. I'm honored and humbled by all support for this vision of the channel. And if you haven't checked out the Patreon community before, go check it out. There's some pretty fun benefits that you gain by joining the crew. Thanks for watching today's video, and I'll see you in the next one.